Good morning, folks. Today we have some big news items to hit. We've obviously got the SDO satellite back running data to us, and that's where we'll begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun was relatively quiet. We did get some filament destabilization signatures just south of the equator. The filaments associated with this complex are small. One lifted into the corona, but didn't really erupt. On both SOHO and stereo coronagraphs, we see minor ejecta enhancements leaving the limbs and far side of the sun only. We do have a lone sunspot up north. Solid size on him, but alone and unable to flare for the time being. The solar wind was relatively calm, but not entirely without incident. So the hashed vertical lines here are the days. You can see their labeling at the bottom. Right as the 15th began on the right side of the chart, we had a jump in density, plasma temperature, the phi angle, and the BZ, but nothing in the solar wind speed. This was the sector boundary crossing of the heliospheric current sheet, the solar wind magnetic reversal we encounter every week or so. It was only a minor geomagnetic tap, but these often precede coronal hole streams, so that's our watch in the solar wind right now. We're off to Australia next. Antarctic systems have been bringing cold to the region, and even though cold and snow aren't unheard of in Australia, especially in June where it's winter there, this one broke records at up to 8 degrees below average. Do kangaroos like snow? Never mind. Up next is a solid article that does something grand and then turns around and makes an error. They adequately recognize a millennial scale solar cycle, and further, tie it to planetary geometry, something we discuss monthly at the website. But then they come round and say they are chaotic, unpredictable cycles and can't be forecast at longer scales, like the positions of the planets aren't predictable or something. Furthermore, their discussion of the approximately 1,500-year bond event cycle is pretty close to the house stat cycle and is a perfect half-harmonic of the base super flare cycle of the Sun. We already know that 3,000 and 6,000 and likely 12,000-year harmonics of that shorter one exist. Folks, we've recently had reason to go over a lot of the points in cosmology, the lack of need for dark matter. Those papers recently suggesting that dark energy was just magnetism, or perhaps a data artifact and non-existent entirely. But there are also the large-scale problems. The Hubble constant discrepancy would be hilarious if it wasn't so astronomically embarrassing. The cosmological principle is violated in the non-homogeneous distribution of matter in the universe. And isotropy also finds the expansion in cosmic magnetic dipole setup, and the early universe was spinning. Can't figure that one out either. The last one is a core topic of today as they have indeed discovered the large-scale asymmetry to the galactic spin direction follows a pattern. And it's a pattern around an axis dipping into the CMB cold spot. Folks, they literally found the axis of the early universe spin. That's all four major telescopes in this subfield showing that asymmetry. We can put that one in the books. Now folks, this preprint is their second try. It got sent back by the reviewers. And while it may eventually get published, it's a guess as to the cause of the vertical distribution of stars and material in the galactic plane. They make a loose argument for high-velocity stars. I don't think it's the right one. And it's not going to help them explain the wave-like structure of the density perturbations. This whole question began three years ago with the identification of that wave in the galactic sheet, and it was confirmed earlier this year that it could not have been the interaction of the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, which is why people are looking at high-velocity stars. We actually shared their preprint with you back on October 12, 2020. In fact, we don't need some special event like high-velocity stars or the SGR Dwarf Galaxy interacting with the Milky Way, because from the other side of galactic astrophysics, we have the Taurus Jet model, which carries the central wavy current sheet just like it does in our solar system. This is what delivers the galactic magnetic reversal, like the solar wind reversal we saw in the data this morning just at the galactic scale. And what's driving the current changing planets and sun in the next disaster cycle unfolding now? It seems the best next special video everyone wants to see is the timeline and order of events in the disaster. What and when? If you like that idea, give the video a thumbs up. We'll try to get it out here later this week. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out our books and other gear at spaceweathernews.square.site. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.